Live by honor, kill by stealth. It is the code of the Azuma Ninja. Many people have died for it, killed for it, and left their blood, scars, and tears on the battlefield. This is my discussion-oriented retrospective on everything related to Tenchu as a franchise. Tenchu Wrath of Heaven was released for the Sony PlayStation 2 in the year 2003. As I said previously in the second part of this retrospective, this is the first Tenchu title that was made by an entirely different studio at the time. Capcom had a subsidiary called K2 LLC, and this wasn't the first time that K2 has crossed my radar. They had a distinctive hand in the cookie jar when overseeing development for Resident Evil 3 Remake. K2 also lent their craft here so Wrath of Heaven could be turned into a reality. The goal for this game is relatively simple when bringing up hypotheticals behind the scenes. How do we make Tenchu accessible for next generation hardware? The same Tenchu structure remained prevalent after playing this iteration. Players must traverse in concealment as much as possible throughout the environment. Enemy guards can either be avoided or brutally stealth killed if they happen to stand between you and completing your main objective. Now, we must understand that only keeping a back to basics formula isn't enough for a third person proven entry in a franchise. Refinement is the spice of life. Imagine having the same noodles without change, right? There would be no variety if you didn't add some spicy beef tempura in that bitch. I can easily say that Wrath of Heaven is really no different in that regard. The first thing you'll bear witness to is the more streamlined controls. For example, it was really difficult doing four somersaults when leaping from building to building with the old PS1 controller and the old Tenchu games. Wrath of Heaven utilized an intuitive scheme where input heavy controls were banished for the sake of holding buttons. It might not sound like a big deal on paper, but it works lovingly in execution. Somersaults, movement, and basic fighting patterns were just core to the pot for quality of life cooking. There's also a new super move aptly named, you guessed it, Wrath of Heaven. As you kill enemies in shadow, you'll notice Japanese kanji will flash on screen. This purple grape Kool-Aid meter will build as a concealed kill piles on more and more. Once the meter is filled, you'll press the circle and X button together and you'll initialize a super move that will destroy enemy peons in a flash of lightning. The downside to this is that you'll be left with one hit point one hit point of HP as the move finishes. Make sure that you cover your ass just in case you're fighting more than one person while doing a Wrath of Heaven. Otherwise, you'll be getting completely stomped and you're going to die if you're slashed once more. This move is just a monster. It can even one-shot bosses on random occasion. There's also a new unlockable character named Teshu Fujioka. He serves as the Tasumaro surrogate in this game, and it's worth mentioning that he has differing factors to him, namely his method to twist the human spine around like a piece of melted cheese. This guy is sick. Doctor by day, assassin by night. He utilizes a lot of chiropractor finishers when doing executions in his moveset. He also has acupuncture needles that he will stab in people's necks. You can also literally just hang someone using one of his gadgets. Both Teshu and Tasumaru fight with their hands, yet Teshu is all about raw strength at the end of the day. I just like this idea that you're playing as a total brute and you're doing all these punishing finishers. You can even pull out a man's heart with your own bare hands. There's also stuff worth mentioning this time around with the grading system. The game will grade you a little bit differently this time around. Currency is now implemented when buying newer items. You can still unlock them after achieving that elusive Master of Assassins rank. However, money can be siphoned back into your wallet 
if you have unused items after a mission is completed. It's a nice little touch considering that your item count is increased for this game. So if you're really doing good, then it feels good. It feels like there's more leeway if you're well rewarded. There's also some small choose your adventure elements that will make fights harder or easier depending on your actions. Still a large part inconsequential since it doesn't happen frequently. As I mentioned before, there's new items in this game, whether they are common items dispersed between all characters or character distinctive weapons. There are bear traps that will lock the leg in place, new swords that have the ability of cutting down undead enemies and apparitions really fast. There's also sticky bombs, which won't leave the body of enemies until they explode. It also allows some more breathing room and dividing conquering and thinking about your best kit before you go on the battlefield. I'll try to keep all the story elements short and sweet, but I would say if you don't want to be spoiled on this part, then I will recommend skipping it. So three, two, one, all you need is knowledge that Ricky Maru supposedly died during the events of Tenchu Wrath of Heaven. You know, where he's escaping through the tunnel and then there's Ayane and the princess. He picks up a giant boulder so they can escape. The boulder splits in half, assuming that Ricky Maru is dead at this point. In the intro of the game, you see Ricky Maru jump through a waterfall and it's really weird and all set up weird and you're wondering what the hell is exactly going on. Come to find out that you're playing as Ricky Maru's shadow in the entirety of the main campaign for Tenchu Wrath of Heaven. I don't know how that works, but we are in a universe where if someone dies, they will be turned into a wooden bar and they will come back to life, a wooden log. So, I mean, I guess nothing is out of the ordinary, but still that's something to expect. You're playing as a man's shadow throughout this entire game and it looks just like I'm like nothing's changed. It looks just like the old Ricky Maru that you saw in Tenchu 1. So, if you're wondering where the real one is, there's actually a mission called Through the Portal. This sort of explains where he is and what he's dealing with. He apparently got transported to the 20th century via a time loop in Tenchu 1 after Lord Mayo came and everything and fucked shit up. There you have it. He's in that time loop fighting 20th century guards who likes donuts and they like tacos and he's just killing these people left and right a real ninja going around and killing all these guards and it's so ridiculous it just gets even funnier when you find out that the final boss of this section is a cyborg ceo good god it was just ridiculous as all get out with this one and the kicker is that all of this is canon to tenchu lore Teshu is mostly on assassination recon missions and Ayane crosses paths between all of the characters throughout all of this grief. Tenrai is just Lord Mayo 2.0, a giant jobber, a giant wannabe, but the real treat is that he, he basically ignites all of these eccentric boss fights, including reviving Tasumaru from the dead. You know the lingo, the heroes cross swords, they save the day, all is restored in shinobi land the story is just all about reviving the past reviving the dead and it really doesn't go anywhere thought-provoking i kind of like tenchu 2's plot a lot more than this one is serviceable at best here though if you are a gigantic lover of fan service then there might be something for you here i have two final things to mention before getting out of your hair with this one Number one, they actually cut the mission editor, which took me by surprise. No more editing your own maps or putting enemy placements all over the place for replay value. So we have exclusions as well. There's also an inclusion that definitely might make up for some of the missing content. You can do a variety of things in the new split screen multiplayer. 
there are things here that I feel was really good and there were things that were really questionable at best. You could do ninja missions where your buddy and yourself have to roam through a complex without being seen. This introduced me to the fact that there was a phenomenal idea presented where both players could essentially do a dual execution on someone. You could also do a boss rush where two players are fighting all the hardened enemies in the game, which offers up a harrowing experience since health was very sparse between boss fights. There's also the idea involving player versus player combat. Pick a character and beat the living tar out of each other with wonky fighting that never really feels consistent or good. PvP just felt like an afterthought. It was a big whatever moment to me. If you play the co-op modes, then I would say keep it cooperative for the sake of maximum fun. Competitive modes are just about as fun as crucifying your own loins with the rusty stapler. The final bit is just talking about Tenchu Return from Darkness. This is an enhanced port of Tenchu Wrath of Heaven that came out a year after Wrath of Heaven's release. So this released for the original Xbox in 2004 and it was only exclusive to the original Xbox. So this is the only place you could get this port. This is like a definitive edition of Tenchu 3, so I would recommend grabbing this copy immediately if you need one. There are updates included, and those updates are two extra missions for Teshu, so if you like this character, then you're getting more to sweeten the pot. There's also updated AI that was implemented, meaning guards can now call for backup if they spot you. The co-op and competitive modes could be taken online this time around. This meant that the PS2 was stuck to offline functionality when playing the competitive and co-op modes. Xbox, they dealt with that network broadband baby so they had that in place for Tenchu Return from Darkness. There are two new characters that were added to the multiplayer and time limits could be adjusted within matches now. Bodies can also be dragged, which was oddly excluded from the PS2 version, despite this feature being in Tenchu 2, I believe. I, I think it started with the second game. There are also new items and abilities. There is a ninja mind control mechanic that will cause a guard to commit Sudoku if there's no guards nearby. There's also all new multiplayer functions where multiplayer characters can pick up certain weapons like spears. And there's a new wallpaper that was added to the main menu screen. That's just a small taste of the additions in Tenchu Return from Darkness, but already that is the better and more supplemental version of Tenchu Wrath of Heaven, so I would say pick that up immediately. It's on Xbox, the original Xbox and original Xbox games, they run a bit more for cheap. I, I, I'm sure that Wrath of Heaven is probably expensive unless you go the route of emulation, but I recommend these games wholeheartedly. Also, hey, did you know there was a PSP version of Tenchu 3 titled Tenchu 3 Portable? It was released in 2009 and it mostly has all of the features from Tenchu Return from Darkness, except for the multiplayer that's been removed. And obviously there's been an obvious downscale of graphics. Although that being said, it's Tenchu on the go. So if you want to try it out, here's a small snippet of gameplay so you can wrap your mind around what is exactly going on with it. Just one more thing to point out, just like Uncle from Jackie Chan Adventures, one more thing. There's also a Tenchu 
manga based on the third iteration and it was published apparently by seshi kishimoto who is the brother of the kishimoto that did the naruto series so that's quite interesting it's a two-part prequel however i can't show you guys any scans for it because it was made on a certain type of format that's very rare and you cannot find it at all these days um it's very weird it's called tenchu san zenpin and it's a prequel to the story of tenchu wrath of heaven i would love to help you guys find scans and all the other stuff but like i said unfortunately they don't have any out there so the best i could do is conjure up this fan made picture on the internet and you can see it for yourself if you could find a copy you would be lucky uh let me know in the comment section if you read this and let me know how it is thank you now on to part four hopefully this doesn't take me about three years to do and i think the next game is fatal shadows uh so once again i am renegade operative i am signing out hopefully you found my tenchu 3 retrospective entertaining informative and you had a lot of fun with it be sure to share the video like subscribe and check out my playlist retrospective elements of tenchu in the description below where i cover the first one and the second one before the this video until then i will see you guys next time and remember live by honor and commit bloodshed to the masses who are in your way i will see you guys next time later